Devon AI. Who remembers Devon? So this came on the scene maybe like a year and a bit ago, and it was marketed as the world's first AI software engineer. I still remember the demo when I first saw this thing, and I was like, what is this? Hey, I'm Scott from Cognition AI, and today I'm really excited to introduce you to Devon, the first AI software engineer. I think this was a bit of a failed launch for this product because it was marketed as like the world's first AI software engineer, rather than being, this is a tool which could help you, which is not perfect, but this could really help your workflow. It could 10X you as a developer, rather than this is gonna replace you, here it is. So this is gonna be a transparent review of this product, of Devon AI. Okay, the first thing to know is that this, like Devon is not a vibe coding tool, all right? So this is like an asynchronous agent that will work on multiple tasks at a time. So this is the site and let's check out first pricing. So there's three payment plans. You got enterprise, team, which is $500 a month and core, which is pay as you go starting at $20. Okay, so I'm on the Devon site here. And the first thing to clear up is that this isn't a vibe coding tool, all right? So this is not like a traditional coding assistant. It works fully autonomously. So it's an AI agent that can execute these engineering tasks because it has a code editor, a shell, a browser, and internet access. And a cool thing about it is that you can give it tasks and it will create multiple parallel Devon sessions. So I can give it one task, a front end task, and also give it another back end task. And it will do those at the same time, which is really cool. And this ain't gonna replace humans, okay? So this is a thing which can really supercharge your development and your team. It's really good for things like bug fixes, PRs, and also like refactoring. Like for example, I had a project recently, a mobile app which I was working on, and we migrated from a certain version of Expo to another. And because of this, we had to change how the data flowed in the app because we went from I think it was like a certain routing way where we were passing data through the routing and we couldn't do that anymore. And tools like this are really good because you can, it has full access to your code base and you can just say to it, we want to upgrade to this version and it will do that migration, which is really good. Okay, when you go on the site, there's three sections to the left here. There's Devon Session, Ask Devon, and also Deep Wiki. So Devon Session is where you just give it these tasks and it will run them in parallel. I'll get onto Ask Devon later, but this Deep Wiki is really cool. So what you do is you, you just plug in your repo. So I created a dashboard, a finance dashboard app with Devon maybe like a week ago. It has access to this repo now and it's just got full documentation, but not just, you know, a few lines. It's just really good where it has, it will show you the architecture, it will show you like diagrams and even like, so this app was a Next.js app for a finance dashboard. And it's just got like the structure of the app. It's got like the type, TypeScript configuration, how the styling works with diagrams and stuff. If you work in an enterprise level, you probably have huge code bases. And if you're starting with a new company, you can just go in, open this up and just in plain English, go through and look through the code base. And it's even got like a getting started section here where you're a new member of your team, maybe a junior can come in, find out exactly how to clone the repo exactly how to get it started. So if you just go on to something like this, this deep wiki and just see of a huge documentation, which not, I didn't write any of this, it just made it itself. And I think this is just a really cool kind of like feature of Devon where you can just plug in your repo and it will just give you all this documentation. Okay, you've also got this here, which is Ask Devon, where you can just ask it any questions about your code base, almost like an LLM, and it will just answer them. So I'm gonna ask here, how are the charts created in this app? Where are they coming from? And it will just say here, so this, these, the charts in this app are created using Chart.js. So it's about where they use different chart types, how it's integrated. If you're working in a team, you don't want to keep hassling the senior developer or like the person who's managing this app, or if you're given a project, you don't want to keep harassing people. This is just a great place where you can just ask questions about the code. All right, so I'm in here now. I just want to show you how it actually works. So I made about a week ago, an empty Next.js app, pushed it to GitHub. And how it works is I plug that repo into Devon and then it, first it needs to get access and do a PR. So if you look here, I give an access and then it just does its own PR with a small change. If you look at the PR, it's just so detailed. It's got like a diagram. It's just the, the kind of PR, I don't think a human would write this. Um, and then obviously I approve that PR and it's basically saying, all right, I have access to this repo. I can start changing stuff now. And if you look, my next thing was, hey Devon, how are you bro? 
I want to create a finance dashboard app with different charts from Chart.js with dummy data. Then it started building this thing. And this took 58 seconds and it just decided on its own accord to use Chart.js. Um, it updated all the files. And if you look here, a really interesting part of it is confidence. So it's actually telling you how confident it feels to execute these tasks. And let's have a look at the PR. So it's Create Comprehensive Finance Dashboard with Chart.js. It's interesting because it's, it's made, obviously made the PR and it said review and testing checklist for human, me. And it's asking me to test all four chart types, make sure they render correctly, verify the page loads without any like errors, and also do a build. Um, and also you have to check the dummy data as well. It's giving me a diagram so I can see like how the data flows and also how like the components work. Um, it's created four different types. Um, bar chart, pie chart, donut chart, and it's even given me the bundle size as well. All right, so I ran this and the libraries just weren't resolving. And this is a great example of the, these AI can hallucinate and also you just, it's just not perfect. There's a lot of hype on social media about like how good AI is, but in the real world with complex projects, you're gonna have issues. So basically what it was saying is that there's a module issue. And obviously if you work in front end and react, you're gonna get these a lot where you're relying on these libraries and they don't work. So it took two minutes, 56 seconds to fix it basically. And it also is it's telling me what it's looking for. So it's probably gonna be a missing dependency, maybe like a path issue or there's no modules. And also it says confidence low. So it's just not sure how to fix this problem. It took two minutes, 56 se seconds and very confidently, I found the root cause. So it's saying that the Chart.js library has known compatibility issues with React 19. So then it did a little bit more work and then it took one minute, 51 seconds and found the issue. So it's saying the module was not found, it couldn't resolve it because the Chart.js dependencies weren't installed in the environment despite being committed to the package JSON. Then it's saying this issue is resolved, I've made the PR, I've merged it into main and it's telling me the commands to run and boom. It actually worked. All right, so what are my thoughts on using this product? Well, if you use it in the right way for the right use cases, it's really good. And things like bug fixes, PRs, refactoring. And my favorite part is definitely the wiki. The fact that you can plug in your code base to this product and you can just get like diagrams and you can just ask it questions with the Steven search as well. It's just really good. I also really like the confidence thing where it's telling you, I know what I'm doing with this task, but I'm not 100% sure. So you can kind of like go back and forth with the agent. But things it, it did, it did some things like really quickly. And I was just like, wow, that has just done it like, like that. But other things maybe I expect it to do, it didn't quite do it so quick. And I'd have to kind of go back and forth with it. Um, but the PRs were just so like comprehensive and stuff. So yeah. Overall, like with any of these AI tools, it's hallucinations, it's obviously security stuff you gotta be aware of. But yeah, that's my thoughts on it, really good. And obviously we're gonna be using these products a lot more in the future, these agents in the job as a software engineer. You're gonna be using these a lot. I just, it's the way the industry is going. So yeah, link in the description if you wanna check out Devon and I'll see you in the next video. Happy coding, ciao.